Hey guys, welcome to Med School Moose. This is going to be USMLE Step 1 High Yield Images Part 1. If you're finding my channel for the first time, welcome. I create a lot of amazing content for medical students and residents, and I will link my trailer for my channel right here so that you can check all of that out. One of the things that I create a lot of content on is prep material for USMLE Step 1 and Comlex Level 1, which is going to be what this video is about. If you've been following my channel for a while, you may have already seen Part 1 from this video series on my channel, but it's a few years old, the audio is not as good, so I wanted to update things, make it a little bit better, a little bit clearer, so that's why I'm remaking this video. These high yield images videos are going to contain pictures that are very important that you need to know for USMLE Step 1 and for Comlex Level 1, and some of the basic associations that go along with that. All of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First image that I want you to know here, this is going to be an H&E stain, and the thing that you need to know is that these are oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes can be identified by the round, dark nucleus that they have, you see a couple of them here, as well as some dark inclusions you see inside the cytoplasm. Here's some on this one, some over here, a little bit over here and in the corner as well. So if you see a picture like this, you need to identify what the cell is. It is going to be an oligodendrocyte. This next image, this is going to be an example of an Achilles tendon xanthoma. This is basically a painless accumulation of cholesterol as well as macrophages and inflammatory cells obviously occurring in the Achilles tendon, typically bilateral. And this is seen with a couple of different conditions, but the important one to know is familial hypercholesterolemia. If you see this image, you want to be thinking Achilles tendon xanthoma, and you want to be thinking about familial hypercholesterolemia. This next picture is going to be an example of a cherry hemangioma. These are dome-shaped, bright, ruby-red, painless papules. You can see one right in the middle of that picture right there. Remember, they are painless. They're usually benign. They're not going to cause any problems. Some patients can get them removed if they like. Sometimes they may go away on their own as well. But if you see this picture, cherry hemangioma. This is a picture that hopefully a lot of you are already familiar with. This is an example of a cherry red spot on the macula. We're doing a fundoscopic exam here and we're seeing this bright red spot. This is that cherry red spot. This is seen in a couple different conditions. Probably the most common one is central retinal artery occlusion, but that is not the only condition that it is seen in. It is also seen in Tay-Sachs disease as well as Neiman Pick disease. So if you see a picture like this, it's a cherry red spot on the macula on fundoscopic exam, and there are a couple different diseases that you need to know associated with that. This next picture is a facial rash, and the association that we need to know here is that this is erythema infectiosum, aka fifth disease. This is a viral infection caused by parvovirus B19, and it causes that classic slapped cheek rash, notably in children. If you see this on the exam, you want to be thinking erythema infectiosum, aka fifth disease, caused by parvovirus B19. This next image is an example of Kaposi sarcoma. This is painless red or purple spots that can be seen on the legs or the feet as well as the face. In some more severe forms, they can even appear on the lungs and in the GI tract. This is caused by human herpes virus type 8, and one of the common presentations is going to be in AIDS patients. So if you see something like this, it's an immunosuppressed patient, you want to be thinking Kaposi sarcoma caused by HHV8, and you want to be thinking about an AIDS patient. This next image, we're seeing some abnormality along the gum line on a patient's teeth here. These are Burton lines. This is a sign of lead poisoning. Basically what we're looking at are some thin black and blue lines visible along the gum margins. You see a little bit of that bluish kind of blackish discoloration right there. This is caused by lead sulfide deposits that are on the gum lines there. And again, it is a sign of lead poisoning. Very important to know that. We have another rash here. These rashes are big on USMLE and Comlex, so you definitely need to be able to identify them. The disease associated with this is going to be henoch schonlein purpura. These are palpable purpura, classically appear on the backs of the legs as well as the buttocks. We see a lot, a collection of them on the right ankle here. This is associated with henoch schonlein purpura, also known as IgA vasculitis, so make sure you know both of those names as well. This next image is a little bit weird, but something that we talk about all the time when it comes to board studying. This is an example of current jelly sputum. This current jelly sputum is something that is seen in alcoholic patients and diabetic patients who have pneumonia caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. So if you see something like this, it's a patient that's a daily drinker or a patient that has diabetes. They have pneumonia. They have, they're coughing up some red sputum. You want to be thinking current jelly sputum, and you want to be thinking about Klebsiella pneumonia. Moving on, this is a classic picture, and this is very highly testable. This is an example of Cryptococcus neoformans. We're going to need to be able to identify this organism as well. This is seen on India ink stain. This was also the cover for that first slide, if you go back and look at that. The important thing to know here with Cryptococcus neoformans, besides this picture, is that this can cause cryptococcosis as well as cryptococcal meningitis in AIDS patients with the CD4 count of less than 100. Really important to know. It's one of those AIDS-defining illnesses. Cryptococcal meningitis 
CD4 count less than 100. This is another facial rash or lesion that we're going to need to be able to identify, and this is an example of a guma. This is basically a chronic granuloma. It can appear anywhere on the body. It starts out as a deep kind of subcutaneous nodule. You see it's kind of going deeper than the skin. It starts to grow, it starts to ulcerate, and then it starts to release pus as we're seeing in the center of it there. And the important thing to know here is that this is something that is seen in tertiary syphilis, so late stage syphilis, if you're seeing this guma. This next picture is an example of a port wine stain. The other name that you need to know for this is nevus flamius. It's a vascular birthmark, and it typically occurs on the face. This one's pretty extensive. It's benign, but it may be associated with Sturge-Weber syndrome. So if you see this, you want to be thinking port wine stain. It's a vascular birthmark. It's benign, but it may also be associated with Sturge-Weber syndrome. This next picture, another rash that we're going to need to be able to identify. Hopefully, this is one that all medical students know. This is a classic example of erythema chronica migrans. This is that bullseye rash that is seen in Lyme disease. It has has that central clearing and then it has the bullseye, the erythema right in the center. Remember, Lyme disease caused by Borrelia burgdorferi and transmitted by the Ixodes tick. If you see this rash on the exam, you immediately want to be thinking about Lyme disease. This next image, we're looking at a CT scan. We see an abnormality right up here. We're going to need to be able to identify that. This is a classic subdural hematoma. Remember the subdural hematoma, it's crescent-shaped as we see kind of like here. It's kind of like a crescent. It's caused by a rupture of cortical bridging veins. It can cross suture lines and it can cause midline shift. A lot of important things there, so I'll say it again. Subdural hematoma, crescent-shaped, caused by rupture of cortical bridging veins, can cross suture lines and can cause midline shift. Very, very high yield to know all of that information. This next image, we have a lovely arrow sign here to help us out pointing at this abnormality. And this is an example of a Bouchard node. These are osteophytes that are seen in the proximal interphalangeal joints of the fingers. They're these swollen kind of bony bumps. They can cause a lot of rigidity, a lot of pain, a lot of immobility. If we're seeing these Bouchard nodes, the condition associated with that is osteoarthritis. Really important to know. Hopefully another classic image that you can readily identify. These are splinter hemorrhages seen on the fingernails, and this is seen in bacterial endocarditis. Really important to know that. More histology, more H&E stain. We're seeing a lot of these kind of world appearing uh, structures here. These are somoma bodies, all right? They're basically microscopic collections of calcium. See a couple of them at the bottom here. We see a, a really beautiful one right near the center of the picture there. The important thing to know, these are associated with several different conditions. They are seen in meningiomas, papillary thyroid carcinoma, mesothelioma, papillary serous carcinoma of the endometrium, and the ovary. So if you see this on H&E stain, somoma bodies, know that it is associated with multiple things. The classic association is meningioma, but know that there are several other conditions that you may have these as well. And again, a more histology. This is a peripheral smear that we're going to need to be able to identify. And we're seeing some of these abnormalities within these cells here. This is an example of Howell Jolly bodies. Basically what these are, these are basophilic remnants, so they're like a nice dark purple that you're seeing here. Remnants of DNA that are seen in red blood cells of patients with low spleen function or asplenia. They don't have a spleen. So if you see something like this, you see these kind of dark purple small inclusions in these cells, you want to be thinking about Howell Jolly bodies. All right, this next one here is an x-ray of the spine. We have many arrow signs, and this is going to be an example of ankylosing spondylitis. Remember, this is that bamboo spine. The spine kind of starts to fuse. We're seeing it along the anterior aspect here, these little fusions of the spine. This is ankylosing spondylitis. This next image here, we have this kind of corkscrew spiral thing right in the center. This is an example of Kirschman spirals. This one's a little bit less common, but I did want to throw it in here so that you can see it just in case it shows up on test day. These are spiral-shaped mucus plugs, as you can see right here, that are seen in the sputum of patients with asthma or other lung diseases. So if you see something like this, you want to be thinking Kirschman spirals, and you want to be thinking asthma or another respiratory disease. That's all for this video. Hopefully you guys like the updated version. As always, please like my videos and comment if you found this useful. Share this with other medical students that might find it useful for the boards, and subscribe to get all of my latest notifications for new videos and posts. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck studying.